At first of all, I'm really, really honored to have you all guys over here. I'm flabbergasted to see all you guys doing all the effort to come over here. I'm really happy to meet new friends from Hong Kong. I'm really honored. It was not easy to get more Hong Kong people or Asian collectors over here. I'm really, really happy to see all these old buddies of mine flying in from all over the world, you know, to support me over here and just to have a good time together. So I think it was a good start, you know. It's our first Asia passion meeting. Probably we'll do it much more. Uh, there's a lot of potential. We see that the market is growing. We see that the people that are on the good side on the, on the, on the, on the road are, or, that are offering really original, nice pieces that will be honored by great clients in the near future. We know this Asia market uh, will become very important for us uh, Rolex diehards, for the guys who are dealing in it, who are collecting in it. And I feel, you know, I see so much uh, attention from uh, newcomers to the market that are looking for information, that are asking me what is a good address to buy over here, who is, res uh, who is uh, respectable and who is not. You know, it, it means to me that there is a lot of potential out there that people are looking for uh, honest and, uh, and, and good pieces to not only to like but also to invest in partly or at least you know to feel the passion that we guys from Europe you know especially my Italian friends started so so many years ago you know it's a great great hobby we have together so uh, again I cannot thank you enough you know it's a great day together we had a lovely spread we had some beautiful watches out there but now it's up to Peter Hillary, the son of Sir Edmund Hillary, who made the major uh, thing happen in 1953 to conquer the Mount Everest, together with uh, Jemlin Tensing uh, Norgay, the son of Sherpa Norgay, who um, uh, conquered the Mount Everest. So please, they will um, give us a, a brief idea about what all happened in the past. They will talk about these watches. So. Please, uh, I will, uh, please, uh, what is it, what I say? Please, uh, please, hello, here is Peter Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> well, what an introduction. Well, we might just start with some film, so if we could get that rolling, please. above the clouds became immortal legends. Now, their sons return to the mountain for a National Geographic Channel television event. Surviving Everest. Experience an epic adventure with the ultimate Everest team. Peter Hillary, whose father was one of the first to step foot on the summit. A climber who has experienced the mountain at its worst. To my absolute horror, I heard this, this sort of thudding sound. And I looked up and my, my great old climbing buddy, Fred Fromm, was just flying through the air at 80 miles an hour. And he just skipped past me and disappeared. And I sort of found myself looking around and thinking, my God, is it after me too? John Ling Norgay, whose father Tenzing Norgay was Sir Edmund Hillary's climbing partner on the first successful summit. When you go climbing, sort of signing a death wish. No, because you, you have no idea whether you're going to come back or not. Frank Bishop, son of Barry Bishop, a member of the National Geographic expedition that put the first American team on the top. If my father passed away, it would be wonderful to follow again in his footsteps and look in the same direction he did. And the expedition leader, veteran Everest expert Pete Athens, now with seven successful Everest summits, the most by any Western climber. Get closer to a place where bad weather takes on a whole new meaning. Over the last 12 hours, jet stream winds just blasting over the summit of Everest. The wind is so strong that you got to push against <coughs> the inside of the tent to counteract the wind. <laughs> These guys are pushing hard. It's blowing hard. It's probably more like double this on the summit. as the Everest legacies carve their own unforgettable story into 29,000 feet of wind-blasted rock and ice. And behind every single Everest expedition, there is the untold story of the Sherpas, 
An entire culture transformed by the mountain. It's the Everest experience with the men who have spent their lives in its epic shadow. Breathing elements, facing death, surviving Everest. Only on the National Geographic Channel. Reaching the top was just the beginning. Well, if you're just wondering, you need to get away from it all, maybe this is for you, I, I don't know. But um, it all started, of course, uh, 59 years ago today. This is the 59th anniversary uh, when my father and Jumling's father, Tenzing Norgay, reached the summit of Mount Everest a few hours ago, actually Nepalese time. And, uh, of course, when they got there, they did something extraordinary, more than just climbing to the top of the world's highest mountain, they really stretched the parameters for every single person who followed uh, about what was possible. And I think that is one of the incredibly important things about some of these great events, you know, whether it's landing on the moon, climbing Mount Everest, going to the, the deepest point in the oceans. It's about stretching the parameters of possibility, and that's a very exciting thing. And of course, you, you need to know what's happening, and you need to have the right equipment, and they certainly did that. But I'll hand over to you now, Jamling. You know, um, I think uh, when we look back 59 years ago today, uh, they were the actual true pioneers, you know. They were the ones that opened the routes for us. They had no idea at what level we needed to use oxygen bottles. You know, they started using them at a lower level. And uh, they were basically paving the route for us so that uh, it makes it a lot more easier for us to climb these mountains these days, uh, not only with the equip change in equipment, but also uh, with the change in technology, with you know, all the GPS and the weather satellites we have today. They didn't have any of those those days. And they basically went into the unknown so, you know, as to make it easier for us today. You, know, you can imagine um, a beekeeper from New Zealand you know, and uh, Sherpa from Nepal. You know, Peter's father didn't speak any uh, Sherpa or Nepali, and my father hardly spoke any English. And you can imagine two people at 27,500 feet sleeping in a tent all by themselves, you know, not talking to each other as if they just got in a big fight, you know, like a husband and wife. And uh, next day they were going to go and create history. And I think it just goes to show that uh, no matter what ethnic background you're from, no matter uh, what geographic locations you're from, as long as you have the same passion and the drive and the desire and you work together as a team, you know, anything can be accomplished. Uh, just uh, take a look at our footage from the 1953 climb. You can see them heading off here for their summit attempt. Now, this was right at the end of the season. The 29th of May it was generally felt to be too late to climb Mount Everest. And they just found a little window of opportunity in the weather. And they were heading up with their whole team, uh, the British team and, and the Nepalese team, to establish the camp at 8,000 meters. And Tenzing and I carried on and finally reached the summit of the world. in a message to the Times from Colonel H.C.J. Hunt, the expedition's leader. It said that Mr. E.P. Hillary, a New Zealander, and Tenzing Bhutia, a Sherpa, had reached the summit last Friday, May 29th. Message added, all is well. So these were the shots as they just got down back into the Western Coombe before they descended.